Hello everyone and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and today I have a Kickstarter preview for you, Deliverance. This is a one to four player cooperative game where you are angels that are trying to take down demons. Doesn't that sound awesome? <laughs> and look at this, this is a prototype. Does it look like a prototype? No. To me, this actually looks like a final version of the game almost. These tiles look great, they're double-sided, oh, and the art looks fantastic. Yeah, it, it looks absolutely wonderful. Uh, I do want to mention this is fully prototype components. Andrew did send this to me. I am not receiving any compensation for this playthrough. And actually, after I do this playthrough, I'm going to be handing this off to Berndt. Uh, so I will not be keeping this copy. If after watching this video, you'd like to check out this game, I will put in the description below, once it's live, which should be around June 8th, the Kickstarter link for the game. Now you can play Deliverance in two different ways. One way is the skirmish mode, which is what we're going to do here. It's a one-off battle. Once we're done, we're going to try and defeat a specific prince. I don't know which one it's going to be. We'll randomly choose when we get there. You can also play in a campaign mode, which will link 14 or 15 scenarios together. You'll have a specific map that's set up, specific enemies. We'll be doing random in our skirmish. I have not seen any of the campaign because that was not in the prototype, so we're only looking at skirmish today. So normally I would walk through a full setup for you guys, but because this is a Kickstarter preview and things are bound to change, let's go ahead and just do a little setup and then jump right into the playthrough. So the goal of our skirmish here will be we have to defeat all minions that are on the board. After we do that, then we're going to draw a specific prince, one of the five that came with this prototype. We then will put that prince as well as a couple more demons on the board, and we have to defeat all of those a second time. Once we do that, we win the game. If ever both of our angels are defeated, we lose the game. I've randomly chosen one map tile per angel, so we're going to play a two angel game, and I just want to show you these are double sided, and look at the art. Uh, yeah, you can set them up any way that you would like, I'm setting them up like so. And now what we need to do is populate our board with enemies. We have a battle deck here, and so we're going to draw one battle card per tile, and that card will tell us what types of demons are going to go out, as well as where the saints, which is uh, the players, the humans that we are trying to protect, will come out on the board as well. Our first board will have, let's see, we will have the Hateful Fiends. We're going to have two Hateful Fiends, and you can see these symbols that tells us where they're going to spawn. You can see when we defeat them, we'll gain two experience, and we're going to place one Saint on this marker. So that's for the first board. The second board, we're going to have an Abomination. Oh, this guy's tough. Uh, three experience when you defeat him, that's because there's only one of them, and we're going to place a Saint on the board in this location. Every map tile has three different symbols and that matches what's on those battle cards. So you can see here that will tell us the saint is going to be placed over here and the two hateful fiends will be placed one here and one here. You can see here we have our two hateful fiends and then our one abomination over here. We have two of our saints. Uh, both of them are starting off and they will always start off on the oppressed side. What that means is during the darkness step, we'll draw more darkness cards for every oppressed saint. If ever an angel is an adjacent or on that same space as a saint and no demon is adjacent to it, we'll flip them over to their protected side, we'll gain an experience, and then we'll draw less darkness cards. So that's one of our objectives is to try and flip them over as soon as we can. Otherwise, we're going to have to deal with a lot of darkness. We also have our initiative track down here, and we've placed our uh, demons like so. We'll place one action marker on each of them because they'll each gain one action when they activate. And I've placed them in order from left to right. You'll also see that down here we have our experience tracker. We, of course, will start at zero. If you want to have more of a challenge, they have three levels of difficulty where you actually give the demons talent cards, but you also will start with your angels having a little bit of a level up as well. I'm playing on the adventure mode, which is the basic mode. This is the way to start. <laughs> uh, I find it's a challenge enough, especially because I haven't had a ton of time to play the game, and it will just help us see how the game plays. Each demon has a demon board, and this board will denote the actions that the demons will take when it's their turn. Uh, they also have spots where if you have multiple demons on the board, so like this Hateful Fiends, we have a 4 and a 2. You can see the 4 on this one. If I do damage to the one that's a 4, uh, the 4 Hateful Fiend, I can place damage or uh, status markers here, so I don't have to have it uh, cluttering up the board. I love that. I love when games do that. We can see here that the Hateful Fiends each have 9 health, and the Abomination has 13 health. Ouch. 
and over here you can see where we could place those talents that I was telling you about if ever you wanted to play at a more difficult, uh, uh, higher difficulty. The game also provides a lot of lore, which is really cool. And so on the back side of these, you can learn a little bit more about all the different demon types as well. I'm playing solo today, but I'm going to play with two angels. However, they do have a mode for just one angel, but it's a little bit more of a puzzle and not as much of a dungeon crawler. At least that's what Andrew was telling me. I haven't tried solo yet. Uh, so I w really wanted to show you what it's like with the two angel playthrough. Let's go ahead and take a look at both of these. Our first angel that we have here is Christine. Now each angel starts with two action tokens, so you'll get two actions. They've got all these different actions that start on their board, and then they have three talents. Talent level one, level two, and level three. Each one is five cards. You'll shuffle those up and you're good to go. And what's really cool about each one of these angels is there's a backside of this, and they give you even more lore, they give you a suggested build, they tell you what they're really good at, so Christine's all about damage, a little defense, not so much support, and not very difficult to play. Uh, and, and tells you about the play style, I love it. So Christine is a fearless warrioress that often charges ahead of the front line into the midst of enemy com uh, combatants. Her powers can level foes foolish enough to get too close to her, or to each other. <laughs> Each angel will start off with two courage, and that's important because some of the actions that you're going to take on your board cost courage. So you need to make sure that you have courage uh, in order to activate them. Our other angel will be Sardius. He is our stone bender, and I think his art looks amazing. Look at that growing trees over here. You can see his stone arm over here. I love it. Two actions, same thing with the three different sets of talents. You can see over here he's not nearly as much damage, but look at all that defense. He's got support. He's a little bit more challenging to play. It says here, Sardius is a living volcano empowered with control over the elements of the earth. His arm juxtaposed two truths about his power, raw power of a lava flow and the glorious flora produced by fertile soil. <laughs> I love it. So now what we'll do is we'll place ourselves onto the map. Unfortunately, our angels blend in just a little bit here. Uh, you have to start on this heavenly board on this side. Uh, so we can only start in this area. So I'm going to have both of us start uh, Sardius right here and Christine right here. And with that, we are ready to jump in. So we'll go ahead and start at the darkness phase. So what we're going to do is we're going to place out one darkness card per angel. We have two angels. Then we're going to add one card per oppressed saint. However, in the first round of a battle, you skip this. So I will only be placing out two darkness cards. Thank goodness. Then we'll have to resolve drawing any excess cards, flipping any face up, and then resolve each face up card and end the darkness step. You can see here our darkness track can hold a total of five cards. We're going to place out two. We're going to place them face down. So right now they're not going to do anything to us. Yay. <laughs> but if ever this gets filled to five and we need to place another one, we're going to start flipping these up and then we'll start activating them. And I can tell you they all are terrible. We don't want to do that. Some of them will even stay out face up and they block that area. And then when more darkness cards should come out, more get flipped over instead. So we want to keep the darkness under control while also trying to deal with the three demons out on the board plus taking care of those saints. Since though we were able to place two darkness cards here and we didn't have to flip any over, we're done with the darkness phase. Let's move to the action phase. We'd first refresh any of our action tokens, but since this is the first round, don't have to worry about that. Then we get to choose an angel to act first. After that, we'll alternate turns between angels and demons. Angels act in a clockwise order, so if I had more than two, that would actually matter, but with two, it doesn't really matter. And demons act in initiative order, which means the hateful fiends will activate first, followed by the abominations. Let's go ahead and start with Sardius, shall we? So what we're going to do is we're going to give him this angel initiative token to notate that he's going. Every time we use an action, we'll flip one of these over. And when we've used both of our actions and we have uh, exhausted all of our free actions that we can take, we'll end our turn. We'll then move to the Hateful Fiends, assuming they're still out, which of course they will be right now. So what you can see on our board is all these different actions that we can take. And what's so fun about this game is each character has totally different actions that they can do. You're going to see a couple different symbols over here on the left hand side. That symbol means it takes an action to activate it. So in order for me to pray, I'm going to have to spend an action. Up here though, you see that this action's got some wings on it. That means that the first time I do the shifting earth, it's a free action. 
after I've done that the first time in a round, if I decide to do this again, then it's going to take an, a regular action to do it. You'll also see that over here, this little symbol here, that means courage. So this one has a plus one. If I do this smash, I'll actually gain one courage. However, if I do this sinkhole, it, I'm going to have to spend two courage to do this. So let's see what we want to do. I think the first one to start off with is Shifting Earth. This one has a range, which is a star. That star means you'll have to read more about the text to know what the range is. Unlike most games where you think of line of sight, because we're angels and demons, things don't block line of sight. Characters don't block line of sight. Demons don't. Other angels don't. There are some blue lines that are on the board, and we'll have to count around those, but that's it. So it's kind of nice. You don't have to worry about is there line of sight. No, just as long as they're in range. And with this ability, it says move up to three targets on the battlefield one space each that's the battlefield so he can uh, he can affect everyone that's on the board so we'll do this as a free action first and we have to do three targets that could include him uh, we'll see which ones we want to do I think we'll target ourselves, Sardius, Christine, and the Saint. So we're going to move the Saint one space towards us. We're going to move one space, and we're going to pull Christine with us as well. Now remember, we just need to get adjacent to this Saint. If we're adjacent to the Saint and no demon is adjacent to it, we can uh, protect that Saint and gain an experience point. If ever, let's say there was a demon adjacent to it, and then we became adjacent to that Saint. That Saint is now considered to be in contest. However, you're not going to flip that saint token until either the angel is defeated or moved away or the demon is defeated and moved away. Also, in this game, adjacency is only orthogonal. You can only move from orthogonal. So if I'm counting uh, for movement, it'd be one, two, three to move like this. Uh, also, for uh, the demons and for range, everything is orthogonal. Nothing is diagonal. And as I was mentioning before, the blue lines, you can see they're blue and they've got a little red there. These are areas that you just have to count around. You can't walk through them. It blocks adjacency, but it's not going to block any sort of targeting. If I had, for an example, if I was here and I had a range of three, I could count one, two, three, and I could still hit this abomination, even though it's technically around this blue line. We just completed our shifting earth, which is a free action. I think... I think I'm going to do it again, and because I'm doing it again in the same round, I now have to spend an action to do it. So I'll move up to three targets on the battlefield, one space each. And I think I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to move this saint up. I'm actually going to have Sardius move on to the same space. You can do that with the saint because think of the saint as an actual person that's in this land. We're more above in, you know, the spiritual world. So we're able to be uh, in the same space as each other. And let's move Christine up one space as well. Now, since we've ended our movement and we're either adjacent or in the same space as an oppressed saint, and there are no demons adjacent to it, we've immediately had them protected and now let's gain one xp if we can move our xp up to three we can level up at the end of this turn now i highly doubt that that's going to happen but hopefully soon we can do that and we can start gaining some of those talents for our second action let's go ahead and do the prey action i'm gonna have to flip this over and now what we do is we'll first gain that one courage so we don't forget we have three courage the max amount of courage you can have is five the max amount of prayer cards you can have is five and the max amount of shield tokens you can have is five 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 nice and easy <laughs> we can now draw one prayer card then test seven whenever you test in this game you're going to roll two d6s and we're trying to roll that number or higher so we're looking for seven or higher on a success cast down a darkness card or remove an affliction or revive a defeated angel uh, so far no defeated angels thank goodness <laughs> first round likely i'm going to be casting down a darkness card but first let's draw a prayer card Prayer cards will go into your hand. You can have a total of five of them, and you can play them either as actions or free actions. It all depends upon what they are. This one is Fiery Stones, and this symbol up here means it's a free action. Play on your turn as a free action. Target Angel moves up to three spaces. Each demon on or adjacent to one of these spaces is dealt one damage. <laughs> that is cool. Now let's do our test, hoping we roll a seven or higher. Oh, that's six and one, exactly seven. 
casting down that darkness means we'll grab this card and we'll discard it. Now I'm going to flip it over just so you can see it. Uh, this one is the Speed of Hatred. So this card would uh, uh, activate and then would stay out on the board. And you'd have to test eight on a success. Each angel adjacent to a saint suffers two damage, then destroy this card. Whoa. <laughs> okay, so this one potentially wouldn't stay out. But those are the types of things that would happen if these get flipped up. This I'll just place in the discard pile since we casted it down. We've completed Sardius' turn. Let's now move to the Hateful Fiends. I'm going to flip this over to notate that they are going to activate. How you activate a demon is you look at their demon board and you read from top to bottom. It says self-harm, range, asterisk, test 7+. plus. On a success, Hateful Fiends deal 1 damage to each adjacent angel and itself. <laughs> so they might end up actually hurting themselves if they roll a 7 or higher for this test. Let's see what they get. And they only get a 6. Bummer. Now you can see on their board they have one action. Roll once and then each hateful fiend will use the action that we roll. So let's see what they do. They roll a four. They have here toxic hatred. Range one, so they need to be adjacent to us to have this activate. They're going to try and move four to get to that range. Hateful fiend engages the nearest angel and deals two damage. Then they're inflicted. Oh, actually, the hateful fiend is inflicted with wither. Wither means at the end of each of their turns, they take one point of damage. However, from what I understand, that will not activate if they do not deal the two damage. They'll just do their movement, and then if they're within range one, the rest of this will activate. You always activate the demons in numerical order. So we'll start with two and then four. So number two is going to move four spaces towards the closest angel. One, two, three, four. If ever there's a tie, the players can choose. He is not within range one, so that's as far as he's going to go. The uh, number four one will also move four. One, two, three, four. And that's as close as he's going to get. Now it's Christine's turn and she's liking what she's seen. She has this lightning stab. Well, first of all, she has her advance, but thanks to Sardius, she doesn't really need to move, I don't think, at least not yet. She's thinking of using lightning stab. She can target a space in range and deal. You see this green symbol? You look over here to see what their green stat is. So her stat is three. So she deal three damage to each demon within run range of that space, but it takes two courage. If we look here, range two, one, two, we could hit the Hateful Fiend and the Abomination over here. We can't hit this Hateful Fiend because remember, adjacency is only orthogonal. This way, this way, this way, and this is diagonally adjacent if we chose this space. I think that sounds pretty awesome, so let's go ahead and do it. So we're gonna give up our two courage to do this. We are going to give up one action to do this. So that's one of our two, but we're going to deal three damage to Hateful Fiend number two and the Abomination. I've placed our three damage here on the slot two of our Hateful Fiend. They have nine health, so that one has six health remaining. We only have one Abomination on the board, so I'm just dropping it on his mat. And remember, they have 13 health, so he still has 10 health remaining. Oof! Now you might say, well, why don't I do that lightning stab again? Because it only takes one action. Well, I'm totally out of courage. And that's how Andrew did a great job of giving you awesome abilities, but you have to use other ones in order to power up those cool abilities. So I am going to, for our second action, I think I'm going to pray. Those prayer cards are just too good. Of the angels that I've played, all the prayer actions are the same. So we're going to go ahead and gain that one courage. I already placed it on the board. We're going to draw a prayer card. Ooh, this one, the golden rule. Plan your turn as a free action. Gain one courage and add light to your space. You may also grant one courage to another angel and add light to that angel's space. <laughs> okay, what light does is if you end your turn on light, you'll heal one point of damage. So that's awesome and it's a free action to play this we're probably going to play this first though we'll roll our dice to see if we get seven we did we got 11 that's amazing so that just means we're going to discard that other darkness card we have no darkness cards out on the board then i think it's hard to say no to the golden rule we'll go ahead and gain one courage that'll put us to two and then we'll also grant one courage to sardius so he'll have four and we're going to add light to both of our spaces I have to say, so far, this has been a great round. <laughs> now, though, we're going to activate that Abomination. The Abomination starts with the Captive Audience ability. It says, Test 7 plus, on a success, afflict adjacent angels with root. Well, there are no adjacent angels, so I'm not even going to do that. We'll just move right to the one action. Let's see what he's going to do. 
He's likely going to rough Christine up a little bit. Uh, let's see, a four. He has Tremor. It says, range infinite, move five. Move towards the nearest angel. Then target all spaces in a straight line in each direction, ignoring barriers. So those blue lines, not going to do anything. Each angel on those spaces is dealt four damage. <laughs> And yeah, you better believe he's going to move one, two right here. And he's just going to barrel through both of these with that tremor hammering the ground. Uh, Christine and Sardius both took four damage. This is the first time I'm dealing with the Abomination, and yeah, he is not a pushover. You can see over here the amount of health that we have. So Christine has a total of 15 health, so she's down to only 11 health now. Sardius here only has 13 health, so with four damage, he's down to nine. We've now completed our action phase. We'll move to the level up phase. We spend one plus one XP per angel, so that's a total of three, to then gain a talent or a treasure card. Uh, we get to reveal two cards from either the heavenly treasure deck or from our lowest level talent that we haven't earned, and we get to pick one. However, we only have one XP. We have saved one saint. We haven't taken out any demons. So that's it. So we are not gonna level up. That means we're gonna end the round. Let's go back to the darkness phase. During the darkness phase, we'll place one card per angel and then add one for the one oppressed saint that we have. So that's going to be three cards. Lucky for us, we were pretty successful at praying last time. We were both able to r get rid of a darkness card. So these are our first three on the track. None of them get flipped up. So now what we can do is move right to the action phase. What we'll do first is we'll flip all of these action tokens back over and then we'll start with one of our angels. Let's start off with Christine this time. We're going to do her free action, her advance, to start off. Christine can move three spaces. She can move one, two, three. You can move through enemy units. We'll then use our first action here to do our lightning stab again. We have two courage. Let's use it up. A target space that's within range two. We're going to target our space because we can then deal three damage. Because remember, that's what our three is here. Uh, three damage to each demon within one range of that space. So Christine runs on in here, slams her sword down, and hits both of these hateful fiends for three damage. That means Hateful Fiend number two has six damage out of the nine, and Hateful Fiend number four has three damage out of the nine. For our second action, let's go ahead and just do our clash. So this will end our turn because we don't have any other free actions we can do. But we're going to deal two damage to a target demon, and you may move that demon one space. We'll also gain a courage back. You better believe we're going to hit Hateful Fiend number two. We're going to hit him for two damage and shove him one space away. We were so close, we almost took him out. But no, he's still alive and kicking. <laughs> okay, now that's going to end Christine's turn. We're going to activate the Hateful Fiends. We'll flip this over. Let's see if maybe, though, he'll kill himself with the self-harm. We'll roll for that test of seven. Let's see what they get. And we have five plus two is seven. Perfect. This means Hateful Fiend number two is going to kill itself. He has eight damage. He's going to deal one damage to himself and we're going to gain two XP. And there's no angel next to him because Christine shoved him away. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, though, the number four will deal a point of damage to Christine, but he'll also take a point of damage. So he now has four. That'll push Christine down to five damage. She only has 10 health. Then let's roll our die to see how that one hateful fiend will activate. He also gets a four. We've seen this before. He's going to use the Toxic Hatred again. He has a movement of four. What he will do is engage the nearest angel and deal two damage. Then it's going to inflict himself with Wither. You know, I almost forgot to show we gained two XP for having that one uh, Hateful Fiend take itself out. <laughs> the Hateful Fiend doesn't even have to move. He is right next to Christine. He's just going to hit her for two points of damage. That'll put her at seven. But then he will gain the Wither uh, status effect. Wither states that when the bear ends their turn, they are dealt one damage. Christine will be almost at half life now. Ow, I might need to look at healing her. We'll place the Wither, though, onto this hateful fiend. And now at the end of his turn, he's going to take a point of damage. He now has five damage, only four health remaining. I think the first thing we're going to do on Sardius's turn is he's going to play his Fiery Stones. We can target an angel and have it move up to three spaces each. Each demon on or adjacent to one of these spaces is dealt one damage. Sardius is going to have Christine move one, two, three. 
we're going to have her start going towards that saint. Uh, we don't get to deal any damage to any demons, but I feel like it's really useful to be able to have less darkness cards. We'll then use our free Shifting Earth so we can move up to three targets one space each. Our first movement will be to have Christine to move one space next to our saint. At the end of your movement, if you're adjacent to a saint, we can go ahead and protect them. That's going to gain us another XP. We're also going to push this Hateful Fiend one away, and we'll push the Abomination one away. I love when you can protect saints from afar. That was awesome, and that didn't even take an action. Then what do you guys say we do some sinkholes? Move any demons on the battlefield one space towards you. Then deal your sword ability or your sword level, which is three. So three damage to the nearest two demons in range. Well, there's only two demons on the board. So I think I'm going to be risky and do that twice. I'm going to spend all four of my courage to do this, uh, but I'm going to do this for my two actions. And we're going to deal six damage to both of those demons. This means we'll pull the Abomination two spaces towards us, and this Hateful Fiend will move one and then one, but then the Hateful Fiend is totally going to die because he only had four health remaining, and if we just dealt him six damage, he's toast. That will gain us two more XP for taking out that Hateful Fiend. We'll also place six more damage here. Our Abomination, five, six, seven, eight, nine, only has four health. We'll also remove the Hateful Fiend battle card and place it in the discard pile. We now only have the Abominations that are on the board. However, we have done our two actions. I have no prayer cards. I didn't get rid of any darkness cards, so this was risky. Uh, now the Abomination is going to go. There's n Oh, and actually before that though, Sardius did end his turn on a light space. Because of that, he's going to heal one damage. That's what's kind of awesome about him is he doesn't have to move a ton to deal damage because he deals damage with the earth. So cool. Okay, our abomination, we can skip the captive audience because no angel is adjacent to him. So let's just roll to see what action he's going to take. Please don't be a three or four again. Oh no, it's a three. So we know what he's going to do. He's going to move towards the nearest angel, then target all spaces in a straight line in each direction, dealing four damage to each angel. He's going to run up to here one to stand here, attack Sardius for four. Fortunately, Christine is not in any of the orthogonal uh, areas that he can attack, so he's only going to hit Sardius for four damage. Only for four damage. That doesn't sound terrible, does it? <laughs> we have seven damage. Ow, only six health remaining. We've now completed our action phase. Let's go to the level up phase. And guess what? We get to level up one, two, three, one, three two, three, uh, two times, you guys. That's what I was hoping. So let's go ahead and level up twice. Each time you level up, you can choose whether you want to gain your lowest level talent that you haven't already gained or draw two of the heavenly treasures and keep one. Uh, I think we're going to start with our uh, talents. So I'm going to draw two of them and we will get to choose one of them. And we have either Static Charge, once per round, test 7. This is a free action, by the way. On a success, gain 1 Courage. Or your skills gain plus 1 Range. Ooh, that's pretty good. I, I think the Static Charge, though, giving us free Courage, because that's a free action. Let's go ahead and keep Static Charge. And like I'd said before, there are a total of five cards here, so each time you play it might be a little bit different. Uh, this is going to be our second level up. Oh man, more uh, options here. Whenever you defeat a demon in combat, gain one courage. Or we've got Shattering Song, which is a free action. Target demon is dealt, uh, that would be her three damage. Afterward, you may move each other demon adjacent to that target up to two spaces. <laughs> okay, that is cool. Oh, do I want more courage or do I, you know, I range five? Yeah, we're going to take the Shattering Song. Now let's look at Sardius's upgrades. His first one will be either the Churning Earth, that's a passive, or we have Heal. Oh, I kind of like Heal. Once per round, test seven on a success, gain one shield. Okay, that's awesome. He would gain shields. Or whenever you move a target, including yourself, you maybe increase that movement by one. Oh, so when we do our Shifting Earth, it would actually allow us to move people to... Yeah, yeah we're going to do Shifting Earth. That looks awesome. Let's take a look at our level 2 talent. So we can either choose Harden, which is a free action, or we have a passive Gem Cutter. 
Harden. Once per round, you have to pay one courage to do this. Grant shields equal to your book, and our book value is two, so that'd be two shields to yourself or an adjacent angel. Then test seven on a success. Your target also gains empower. Empower is awesome. If you look here, uh, add one to damage dealt by the bear of this boon. So you can add additional damage. Think of Christine dealing like four or five damage with her lightning stab. <laughs> Yeah, that looks great. What's this one? Whenever you deal damage with a skill, you may spend X shields. That skill deals X additional damage. Nah, nah, we're going hardened. That'll finish our second round. Gosh, I'm having a lot of fun here. Let's start our third round. That's with our darkness step. We're going to place out two darkness cards, one per angel. And then since we have protected both of our saints, we don't draw any more. If we did, we'd start flipping these over. But so far, we have kept the darkness at bay. Let's go ahead and start our actions. Let's start off with Sardius first because I want to do Shifting Earth. We can move three targets on the battlefield one space each, but don't forget we have our Churning Earth level ability. So now we can move them by two, which is awesome. I need to get Christine back into the battle. Thanks for taking care of that saint, but we need your help with this abomination. And of course, this is a free action. So I'll have Christine move two spaces over here, getting a little bit closer. I'm also just going to push this abomination two spaces away from us, just in case. Who knows what he's going to do, but this way he can't root us as well when he activates. And I haven't talked about the root status effect. You can see here the bear's next movement is reduced to zero, then discard this affliction. I think our first action this round will be to pray. We're going to gain one courage. We're going to flip one of our action tokens over. We're going to draw a prayer card, then test a seven. We'll go ahead and reveal our prayer card, and we have the high stance. This is play anytime, not in action. Ooh, in this one, you can see it looks a little bit different. It doesn't have to be on your turn. You can play it anytime. Choose one, prevent up to two damage from a single source, or the target angels strike this round deals two bonus damage divided among targets however the angels controller chooses. Two dice, looking for a seven. Ah, we only have five. Then I think I'm going to use our Harden. I'm going to spend that one Courage that we just gained, and we can do once per round Grant Shields equal to your book value. His book is two, to yourself or to an adjacent angel. So he has to do himself. Then he was going to test seven plus. On a success, he can also gain in power. The max amount of shields you can have are five. Anytime you take a point of damage, you can reduce your shield by that amount to reduce that amount of damage. Looking for a seven or a higher, beautiful. So we've become empowered. And that means we get to add one damage dealt by this bear for this boon. And I think we're just gonna pray again. I want these prayer cards so bad. So what do we have? It is better to give. Add or subtract two from a test. If this causes an angel to pass a test or a demon to fail a test, gain a courage. Play anytime, not in action. We're looking for a seven here. No, that's only a six. Sardius will end his turn, and because he's standing on light, he will heal by one point of damage, so he not only has six damage on him instead of seven. Woo! <laughs> now we'll have the Abomination go. The first thing we would do is his captive audience, but once again, we don't have any adjacent angels. So let's just roll to see what he does. Uh, this time he does a one. Don't worry, on a one, all he's going to do is the Disorienting Smash. He can move up to five, and he's going to engage the nearest angel and deal five damage to them. Yeah, five. Both angels are two spaces away, so we're going to go ahead and have the Abomination come over here and attack Sardius because Sardius has some shields. We'll place three damage onto Sardius. We'll remove the two shield because that blocked two out of the five damage. He now has nine damage out of 13 health. We'll now move to Christine's turn, and the first thing we're going to do is her free advance. With that advance, she'll move one, two, three spaces up. She's now two away from the Abomination. Then I think we'll do our static charge here. Once per round, test seven plus. On a success, we're going to gain a courage. I believe in you, Christine. I believe in you. Six, seven, eight, nine. Beautiful. We now have two courage instead of one. We're then going to use our Shattering Song. This is still a free action, and that's important, and you'll see why in a second. This is up to range 5. The target demon is dealt 3 damage. Afterward, you may move other damage or other demons. We're not going to worry about that. We're going to have Sardius play the high stance. He's going to choose target angel strike this round deal 2 bonus damage among targets however the angel controller chooses. So we're dealing 5 damage to that abomination. 
5 damage plus the 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 here. Yeah, totally gone. We just took out the Abomination. We gained ourselves 3 experience and we immediately stop at this point because now all of our demons have been removed from the board. Once you've defeated that final demon that's on the board, you immediately move to staging for the final battle. Christine will still have her two actions and you'll see what we'll use those for in a second. So first thing we're going to do is remove all status effects from characters and map tiles. So that means that uh, Sardius is no longer going to be empowered. Bummer. We're also going to remove the light that's on the board. Too bad it doesn't say something like, hey, everyone heal all their damage. <laughs> nope, that's it. Our, our next step... We get to discard all of the face down darkness cards. Now, if any of these had been face up, they'd actually stay. So that's why I wanted to make sure I kept all of them face down because that means we don't have to deal with any of them and we're gonna have a clear darkness track. We're also going to remove any of the saints from the board. So I've taken them off, but we are not going to move where our angels are. They are going to stay as is. For each of our unused actions an angel has remaining, which Christine actually has two, we can choose from one of the following. We can either gain a courage, we can cast down one face up darkness card, we can heal two damage or draw a prayer card. And as much as I want prayer cards or I want courage, I kind of feel like four points of healing for Christine. Yeah, it's, it's, it's too good. I mean, we had so much damage. I think that's the best option here. Now what happens is each angel gains a free level without reducing our group experience. So let's go ahead and do that quick. We'll start with Christine. She either has the Great Storm or she has the Forked Lightning. So Great Storm, it costs three courage range four. Target a space and range. Demons on or adjacent that space are dealt damage equal to three plus two. That'd be five damage whoa or forked lightning target up to three demons within range deal one damage to each target that's nice because it's a low courage cost but this great storm seems too dang great <laughs> we're gonna take this one for sure sardius let's see what he gets he will have either earthquake or he will have a uh, hot springs so upgrade this will actually upgrade his sinkhole attack your sinkhole skill deals uh, additional three damage. Wow, divided however you choose among each demon on the battlefield. <laughs> That's in addition to its normal damage. The sinkhole normally deals three damage. So that actually deal six damage. Uh, and three of them we can do anywhere we want. That is fantastic. Or we have this one. Oh, and by the way, that doesn't cost anything. This one's going to cost us three more courage range two. Angels in range heal. That's only for two and gain a shield. Eh, do I want healing or damage? Uh, yeah, you, you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the earthquake because I'm all about damage, my friends. It probably means we're going to lose, but we're going to go out in a blaze of fury or a blaze of glory. I don't know, one or the other. We now need to set up our board again for a final battle. This time, though, we're going to draw from the regular battle deck for all the tiles except for the last one, which for us, since we're only playing two angels, that means we'll draw from here once, and then we'll draw from our uh, the Dark Prince battle deck one time as well. You always end with this one. Uh, so we'll start with just the regular demons. So we have the meddling imps. We're going to have three meddling imps and a saint, and then our final boss will be the Euphrates Frogs. Oh, interesting. I haven't played them. They're actually three different characters that we're going to have to defeat. Well, this is going to be fun. <laughs> I've placed the Meddling Imp initiative card here and then the Euphrates Frogs. You're going to see in a second that they have action points equal to the amount of angels. So that's why I've placed two on them to remind myself of that. Here we have what our board looks like and this is going to be fun. Six more demons to deal with. <laughs> And before we continue on, I need to remember, I can also spend the experience on my experience track. I have exactly what we need to be able to level up one more time. Now, each of us have all three of our skills, so now we can start drawing heavenly treasures. When you're playing the campaign mode, there'll be some sort of restrictions there. Uh, but with the skirmish mode, you can have as many heavenly treasures, doesn't matter what type. You're going to draw two and keep one, just like what we did with our level cards. Christine will grab these two heavenly treasures. Her first one, she has the Warden's Guard. When you first gain this item, heal two damage. It would increase her health by one and increase her green damage by one. So that'd be a four. Her lightning stab would deal four damage. That seems kind of amazing. Her other one is just uh, something for her chest. It would give her two hearts and increase her book. Hmm. 
Yeah, I think I'm definitely going to go with the Warden's Guard. We're going to immediately have this go into effect. So she's going to heal two damage. She only has one damage on her. <laughs> and now she has 16 health, and this is a four instead of a three. Let's check out Sardius's two heavenly treasures. So he either has the Flaming Saber. This one, uh, this will stay out. He can pay two courage to gain one action usable only once this round. He'd increase his sword value to four. Or he has this one, which gives him a free action only on his turn. Test nine. Ooh, your next skill deals two bonus damage usable once per round. That's the Thunder Stave. Yeah, I like the damage. Let's do the damage Thunder Stave. I do also want to show you the board of our princes here, the Euphrates frogs. So you can see here, each one has 19 health. At least that's how I understand it, which seems... Ooh, this is going to be fun. It says here, the Euphrates frogs each have separate status effects and health pools, but share the same action pool. They do not lose actions when a frog leaves play. And you can see here, they have one action per angel. So they'll always have two actions. Up here, you can also see if you're playing with more players, you're going to have more health for them. So if you're playing with three, they'd actually have 22. And then you would add six if you're playing with four players. Now we're going to grab the Dark Prince's deck, and each of the bosses have their own deck. Now these cards are a little bit different than the Darkness cards. They actually have a star value. You're always going to put the highest numbered star at the bottom, so you can see one, two, three, four, four stars here, followed by another four. So those two I've shuffled up and randomly chosen, then the three, then a two, then a one. That's because you're going to reveal one of these each round, and probably they're going to get progressively harder. At least that's what I've seen with the other bosses that I've played. And with this, I think we are ready to start. So first thing we do is our darkness step. Remember, we ignore the saints that are oppressed. They, are, they always start out oppressed. So we only have to place out two darkness cards. However, whenever the prince's deck is here, one of those darkness cards is going to be replaced with one of the prince's cards. And unlike darkness cards, they're actually going to come out into play face up. We have here the Grand Deception. Now, these two symbols, that one means it stays out in play. This one is a Stronghold. That means we cannot cast this down. This is going to be out now for the rest of the game, and it's going to block one of the Darkness spots. It states here, place one fewer Darkness cards each round. Oh, that's nice. And do not draw Prince cards as normal. Instead, reveal a Prince card when a frog is destroyed, but before it leaves play. If it has one of these symbols, then it activates immediately, and then it just tells you you cannot cast this down. Okay, we'll refresh our actions, and let's start with one of our angels. What do you say we start off with Christine? First thing we're going to do is use her static charge. Once per round for free, we're going to test seven. If we succeed, we'll gain one courage. We'll give our dice a roll, and that's 11. That will definitely work. One courage for Christine. What do you say we do our first action and let's pray? We're going to spend that first action. We're going to generate a second courage. We're going to draw a prayer card and then test seven to see if we can cast down one of those darkness cards. We'll draw that prayer card and we have angels heal seven damage focus on the family nice divided however you choose we'll then test our seven and we have ten we're good to go we'll cast down this darkness card i don't want to deal with any more darkness than i have to i really want three courage so i can do that great storm so i think our second action we're going to do is clash that will give us a th our third courage we're going to deal our level of sword is two so two damage to the target demon you may not or you may move that demon one space after doing so and that will be our second action we'll go ahead and use clash on morbus giving him two damage he only has 17 health remaining shoving him over here then we'll use our advance so we can move up to three spaces we're going to move one and i think we're just going to move here because after we're done with our movement we're next to this saint and we can save this saint they are now protected we'll gain one experience point yeah this is definitely going to be interesting i think of how we're going to deal with this <laughs> we've completed our angel's turn let's move to the meddling imps the meddling imps are quite obnoxious. You can see here at the start of their turn, they remove all damage counters on them. So you have to take them out before they will activate. Otherwise, they'll reheal. They get one action. We'll roll up our die and they get a two. Have a little thorn in your side. This is range one, move seven. Yeah, they can move a lot. Meddling imps engage the nearest angel and as wither to that target. If that angel already has wither, then they'll cause two damage instead. 
Nothing like getting them right into combat. Move seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Oh, so two of them can hit both of our angels. So both of our angels are going to gain the wither effect. And that means at the end of their turns, they take one point of damage. Wither for Sardius is pretty terrible. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do Praying first, hoping that if I succeed here, I can go ahead and discard this Affliction. So we've gained one Courage. Let's draw a Prayer card and then test seven. Let's see what we get for our Prayer. And we have a Brotherly Edification. Uh, play on your turn as a free action. Move a target saint up to three spaces, then protect each saint that is adjacent to you, even if that saint is contested. Hmm. Kind of good, but that saint's way too far away right now. Come on, test of seven. Let's see it. Oh, we've got an eight. That means we'll be able to remove this wither. Great. Then let's go ahead and use that to activate our harden, and this is a free action. Once per round, grant shields equal to your book value. His book value is two, so he will have two shield. And then he'll test seven, and if he succeeds, he'll also gain empowered. Looking for lucky number seven or higher? Oh, that's only six. Well, the nice thing is, is we do have it's better to give. Add or subtract two from a test. So we're going to add two. If this causes an angel to pass a test, gain one courage. So we'll gain a courage, and we got enough then because five, six plus two is eight. That's above the seven. So we'll also gain the empowered, which means all of our attacks now will deal plus one damage. Oh, it's the backside of this token. That was a free action, so for our second action here, we're going to go ahead and do our smash. We're going to deal 2 plus 1, 3 damage, gaining 1 courage, and we're going to gain another shield. So it'll be shield number 3. We have to be within range 1 of whatever demon we're hitting, so we're going to hit this number 1 meddling imp. Unfortunately, they have 4 health, so it doesn't take him out. That means I need to take that guy out before he activates again, or he's going to heal in full. Now, though, the Euphrates frogs are going to activate. So our first activation is going to be number five, and then our second activation is going to be number six. Number five here, we have a shadow volley. This is range infinite, move infinite. Morbus moves to the nearest protected saint, then adds shadow to each angel's space. If an angel space already contains shadow, that target is dealt two damage instead. Morbus is going to move right over to here. Now, this is now contested, so we won't flip that saint. But if ever Christine moves away from that saint, that saint is going to be flipped back over to the oppressed side. Not good. Also, Christine and Sadrius are going to be on shadow spaces. And if you end your turn on these spaces, you take a point of damage at the end of your activation. Well, that's just wonderful. Then we have the Blighted Currents. Each angel is afflicted with Wither. If an angel is already afflicted with Wither, it gains two damage instead. So Christine's going to take two damage, and Sardius, who just got rid of Wither, will gain Wither again. We've now all activated. We look to level up. We only have one XP. Not going to happen. So we'll start with the Darkness step for the next round. We normally would place out two Darkness, one per angel. But remember, because of this card, we're going to draw one less Darkness card. So we're only going to place out one. We do have one more Oppressed Angel, so we'll do one for that. But that's it. We'll then move to the Action phase, and we're going to choose Sardius as our Active Angel first. First thing we're going to do, sink hole it up. Move any demons on the battlefield one space towards you. Then deal. That is now four damage to the nearest two demons in range. However, with this, your sinkhole skill deals an additional four damage, divided however you choose amongst demons on the battlefield, in addition to its normal damage. So we're dealing a total... Wow, that's just a lot of damage. And I need to remember that we are empowered. Add one to damage dealt by the bear of this boon. So I would say this one, we're dealing a total of instead of four damage, it's going to be, that's not five per, one will take five damage, one will take four, and then this will deal another set of four damage. That's how I'm going to play it. This will, of course, cause us to discard two of our courage. We get to move any amount of demons one space towards us. So I think I'm going to do that with Kulturo here. I think I'm going to leave them like so. I don't want to change that. 
Uh, and then what we get to do is deal five and four damage to these two. That's going to take both of them out. They're the two closest demons to Sarduous. Then we can deal four damage amongst all of these demons that are out on the board. Might as well do the final meddling imp. We'll deal four damage to him. That will just gain us three XP. We just took out all those imps in one shot. Sardius, you are the angel. One, two, three. We'll take that. We'll remove the meddling imps from here. Now all we've got are the bosses left. I'm then going to use his free action for shifting earth. And remember, we can move demons or saints up to two spaces now instead of just one. So I'm going to go ahead and move. Oh, let's see. Let's move this saint two spaces closer to us. We'll move Morbus one, two right here. And then we definitely want to get off of that shadow space. So I'm going to move one, two. Uh, I also don't want to be the closest yet. Christine has all of her health. We have not healed yet. <laughs> Our second action then will be to pray. We need courage and we need prayer to do so. We have here declaration of power. Play any time, not an action. Choose one. Add two to the result of a test or add two damage to an angel's strike. We're looking for a seven on this test. Ten. Beautiful. I, oh, do I get rid of the wither or darkness card? You know, uh, let's do the darkness card. We're going to discard the darkness card. So we've now done our two actions. Now the Euphrates frogs are going to go. Our first one will be a two and our second one will be a one. Before I activate our frogs and cry a little bit, we are going to remove one shield on Sardius because he did take one point of damage due to his wither, but he'll stop that with his shield. We're going to have Shadow Step activate twice. Colturo engages the angel with the lowest health, uh, infinite move. So yeah, that's going to be Sardius. Oh, golly, really? Then deal two damage and add curse to the target. Add one to damage dealt per affliction on the target of the uh, or the target space. Seriously, and why it says that is if you're in a shadow space, you're considered to be in a space that has an affliction. So that's why it says you'd add one. So if Sardius was on a shadow space, you'd add two damage to this. But since he's withered, we're just going to add one. This does mean that Sardius is going to be cursed. Ugh. What curse means is you subtract one from any of your tests, and if you fail a test, you take one damage. Why not? He's also, because he's going to do this twice. You can only be cursed once, but he's going to take, for the first attack, he's going to take two plus one, which is three. Then he's going to take four damage, two and two, because he'll have two uh, negative effects on him, cursed and wither. So he's taking three plus four, seven damage. Yeah, this may end up being a very quick game. <laughs> we'll bring Kalturo here, and I think he's going to take out Sardius. The first attack on Sardius will deal three points of damage. He has two shields, and then he'll take one more. Okay, so that means he's at a total of ten damage. Unfortunately, then he's going to get hit for four more damage. <laughs> With four more damage, that's going to take him out. Whenever an angel is defeated, we're going to remove that angel from the battlefield and remove all positive and negative conditions. So we'll get rid of Cursed, and we'll get rid of Wither, and we'll get rid of Empower. We will retain any damage, courage, talents, heavenly treasure, and prayer cards. Okay, so we're still not totally out. Defeated angels still take their turns as normal and may still use the prey actions and prayer cards. So we can still pray. Defeated angels may be revived through card effects or even prey actions, and angels may even revive themselves. When an angel is revived, remove one damage token from their character and place that angel on any space on the Heavenly Gates map tile. And they may once again use all their available actions, <laughs> if they have any. So we can try and have Christine pray to get Sardius back, or Sardius can try and pray himself back. Well, Christine is pretty pissed about what she just saw. She's going to go ahead and start off by doing the Great Storm action. It's going to cost her all three of her courage. Hopefully, we'll be able to get one back and one action. We're going to target a space within range four. Demons on or adjacent to that space are dealt damage equal to three plus one because of our heavenly uh, card here. So that's four damage plus two. That's six. So we're going to deal six damage to all of the enemies that are in this range. Now, the nice thing for Christine here, range four, we can go one, two, we can target this space. We just dealt six damage to all three of these frogs. That's 18 damage. <laughs> That's amazing. Now, only one of the frogs had two damage from before. That was, which one was that? That was Amorbus. So that one will have eight damage. All the other ones will just have six. 
We'll then use our second action to pray, gaining one courage. We'll draw our prayer card. Each angel gains two courage. Ah, uh, yeah, the judgment and justice. We'll then test seven to see if we can get Sardius back into the game. We're at six. Sardius will go ahead and play his declaration of power. We're going to add two to result of a test. So then that means, yeah, we're going up to eight. That means Sardius will come back alive. He has only one health, but he can come back onto the board. Remember, he has to respawn on this board, so we'll put him over here. We'll then have Christine use her advance, which is a free action, and she's going to move herself to here, so she's still adjacent and protecting that saint. Uh, but she can do that as a free action. And then the other thing she's going to do is test 7 to see if she can get that static charge and gain another courage. Come on, 7 or higher. Oh, it's an 8. Awesome. So she'll gain a second courage. She now has 2. And then at the end of her turn, she's going to take a point of damage. That will be her fourth one. We've finished our action phase. Let's move to the level up phase. One, two, three. We definitely can level up. So we'll start with Christine. We'll grab two heavenly treasures. We either have the victorious diadem. This has a use once effect, so we can only use it one time. Gain a boon of your choice and place this token on it. Uh, so you get to gain any boon. That increases your health and your book value. Or this one, have a free action, test 9 plus. Your next skill deals 2 bonus damage, use only once per round. Yeah, this is going to increase her damage. I'm all about damage. Okay, let's see about Sardius. Sardius maybe needs some help with not damage, maybe healing. Okay, these are all just boring. Why would I ever pick this one? We'll definitely do the strong tower. That's going to give him two more health and give him one more sword value. We'll then move back to the darkness step. We'll place one uh, per angel, minus one because of the specific boss that we're fighting, but then we have one oppressed saint. So we still place out two. We haven't revealed any of these darkness cards. I'm, I'm really happy about that. And for this round, I definitely think we're going to start with Christine playing Focus on the Family. Angels heal seven damage divided, divided however you choose. Yeah, all of that's going to be for Sardius. That way he only has six damage on him. Christine's going to do her justice test here for nine or higher. Beautiful. Six plus three is nine. That means now our next skill deals two bonus damage. Okay, we're also going to do our static charge. We just need a seven or higher for this. Six plus three is nine. That means we have three courage for our second attack. You know what we're going to do with three courage. Great storm again. Target a space in range. Demons on or adjacent to that space are dealt damage equal to this. Well, we've got a book value of two. Our uh, hammer value is three plus uh, two, which is five. So five plus two is seven. Plus we're dealing two more damage. That's nine. Nine damage to each one of these guys. We can do that because we can target this space. And all of them are adjacent to that space. <laughs> That's amazing. Nine damage to each of them means that Kalturo will go from six to 15 damage out of 19. We'll also have the Armus do that. He'll go to 15 out of 19. And then over here for Morbus, he'll go to 17 out of 19. Almost taken out. I think this goes to show that Christine is definitely a good damage dealer. Love it. Unfortunately, though, at the end of her turn, she is going to take one point of damage, and I'm definitely not going to move. I want her to be next to that saint. We'll then roll twice for the Euphrates Frogs activation. We've got a three for one, and we've got a five for the other. Three is a sword dance. We're going to have Armus engage the angel with the highest current health and deals five damage. Whoa! And then a five, we've got the shadow volley. Morbus moves to the nearest protected saint, then adds shadow to each angel's space. And yeah, eh, we're not going to have to deal with the two damage. We're just placing out more shadow. Armus is going to move to here, dealing five damage to Christine because she has the most current health. Not anymore. She now has 10 damage, so she only has six health remaining. Where are my shields? <laughs> Sardius, you're supposed to be doing that. Uh, Morbus is then going to move to here again, and then he's going to place out shadow underneath Christine right here and underneath Sardius right here just makes us continually have to move i love how this works this is a great boss fight sardius is going to start us off by doing a prey action that means he's going to move to two courage which is great because sinkhole costs two uh we're going to draw a prayer card target up to two demons afflict each target with wither then you may move each target up to two spaces with a withering gaze and that's a free action 
We'll then do our test for seven. We've got a 10. So we're going to discard just one of these darkness cards. I don't want to deal with it. Let's go ahead then for our second action, do the sinkhole again. I should really be doing molten shields, you guys. This is how we would be gaining shields. I haven't been doing that. <laughs> Andrew's probably watching this going, Colin, you only attack. Yeah, well, I would say that I probably would play this differently when I'm not doing it recorded. I'm trying to just, boom, push through this, I guess. So we have here, move any demons on the battlefield one space towards you. Then deal whatever our um, sword damage is, which is three, plus two down here, which is five. Plus, we're going to add an additional five, thanks to our earthquake, of damage to the two nearest demons in range. And then we will deal five damage to any demons that we'd like. Depending upon what their cards do, which who knows what they do, this could potentially take them all out, I think. So what we can do is we can push them all one space towards Sardius. I think I'll just do those two like that. Then I'm going to deal, because these two are the closest to Sardius, five damage to each of them. Cultural here will be our first one that we're going to deal the five damage to. He should be killed. However, we have to draw the top card of their deck, and this is their level two one. Okay, this one is also Stronghold, so it's going to stay out. When a defeated frog is supposed to take an action, angels are dealt one damage each, divided however players choose among the angels. Okay, that's not bad. So that means Kulturo is gone. Five damage, done. Next, Morbius here, who has 17 out of the 19 damage, will also be killed <laughs> with the Earthquake. This is what you get for taking out Sardius. Uh, let's see what we get. We have a Sinister Return. Are you serious? Your fallen foe curses you and with their last breath utters a dark spell before, the crum before crumbling into ashes. Put the first two defeated frogs back into play at full health adjacent to the last defeated frog. <laughs> I was worried about that. I was wondering how you'd get to all five. Well, yeah, so they're right back at us right next to Armis. That is so incredibly cool and so incredibly annoying. <laughs> Okay, so after that's happened, we still have five damage that we can deal across any of these demons. And I think we might as well deal four damage to Armis because we can take him out. So let's do that first and then we'll deal the remaining one somewhere. That's because Armis has 15 damage plus the four is 19. But now we got to draw our next card. Uh, let's see. This one is filled with wrath. Each time an angel is dealt damage in combat, add one to that damage. Oh, and we can't cast that down. Uh, so now the darkness track is totally full, but we now only have two frogs out on the board. We still have one more point of damage we can place, so I'm gonna place one more on Kulturo. So Kulturo has one damage, he has 18 health remaining. Morbus has all 18. Now, Sardius has done all of his actions, but he can still do his free actions. First thing we're going to do is the Withering Gaze. Target up to two demons, afflict each target with Wither, then you may move each target up to two spaces. That means both Cultro and Morbus will be Withered. We're then going to have Cultro move one and we'll have Morbus move one as well. That means Christine's got a great spot where she can hit both of them. And then finally, we'll do our Shifting Earth. So we'll go ahead and move this Saint one over, Christine one over, and we're going to move ourselves out of that shadow space. And that's a free action. Oh, okay. That's going to end this round. We only have one XP, so we're just going to move right to the darkness step where pain is going to ensue. In the darkness phase, we can see our entire track is filled up. Oh no! So what we're going to have to do is flip over these two because normally we'd only do one, plus we have one oppressed saint. So two. Both of these are going to be flipped over. Our first one here is desensitized to violence. Each angel's shields are reduced to zero. Ha! Joke's on you. I don't have any shields because I'm playing full attack mode. <laughs> and this one. Okay, this one's going to stay out, so it's just going to block this spot. The player with the greatest number of prayer cards in their hand must test 7+. plus. On a failure, that player must discard a prayer card. We each have one, so let's do Sardius. 7 or higher. Or how about 5? So, no, we failed. <laughs> so that means we'll have to discard our one prayer card. Now we'll move to the action phase, and you know what we're going to do? We're going to play Judgment and Justice by Christine. Each angel gains two courage. Just think in a four-player game how powerful that is. Still, with two players, we're each going to gain two courage. That was our first action. Let's go ahead now and do our free action, trying to power up our attack. Twelve! Twelve is greater than nine, so our next attack will deal two damage. 
then you know what we need to do. We need to get a seven or higher and we can get a third courage and do the great storm a second time. Seven or higher. Oh my gosh, six plus three. Six, seven, eight, nine, nine plus two damage. We gained another uh, courage because of that roll. So we have three courage. Let's great storm it. So just to make sure that you remember, we can do a range of four. We'll deal three plus two, which is five for our green stat, plus two more for seven, plus two more because we just powered up our attack for nine. Nine damage each. We can target at a range of four, one, two, three, right here. We hit both of them for nine. Remember that Coltro has one damage already, so he has 10 damage. Morbus has nine. Christine is still withered, so she'll take one point of damage at the end of that. She now only has five health remaining. Next now are the frogs. Let's see what they're gonna do. We rolled a five for the first one and a two for the second one. Just so I don't forget, remember at the end of their activation, since they're both withered, they're going to take points of damage. So Kulturo will have 11 and Morbus will have 10. Five, of course, is our Shadow Volley. Morbus will move to the nearest protected saint and then adds shadows to each of the angel space spaces. Fortunately, we keep moving off of those spaces with shadow so no one takes damage. But then the two will activate, and that's Shadow Step. Kultru, or Kultro, I can't say his name, sorry, engages the angel with the lowest health. That's definitely Christine. Then deals two damage and adds Cursed to the target. Add one damage uh, per affliction to the target or the target's space. And unfortunately, oh my gosh, this could be really brutal because she's going to get Shadow placed in her space first. I've got to say, I love when boss fights are this tense. I don't know if we're going to make it. <laughs> We're going to place a shadow here and a shadow here. That was for Morbus going. Now Cultro is going to go. He'll go ahead and move right here. He's going to deal a total of four damage to Christine. Two damage plus she's withered. So that's three plus the shadow space. That's four. She has 11 damage on her. Plus four is 15, but she has 16 health, you guys. So she has one health remaining. Bring it. We're going to move to Sardius' turn, and I forgot he has the Thunder Stave. He's going to go ahead and test 9. If he's successful, he'll deal 2 bonus damage. We just need a 9. That's all I'm asking. Oh, how about a 10? A 10 plus 2 damage. Thanks to Christine, we have the 2 Courage we need for this sinkhole. We're going to spend 1 action, remove our 2 Courage. Move any demons on the battlefield space, one or battlefield, one space. Then we're going to deal. We've got 3, 4, 5 plus two, seven damage to the two demons that are nearest in range. Then we get to deal an additional five damage divided however we choose among the demons on the battlefield. Seven damage to each of them, and then five damage spread out how we want. <laughs> seven damage to our miss, we'll put them at 17 damage. Seven damage to Cultro, we'll put them at 18 damage. Okay, now we have five more damage we can do. We'll deal one to Cultro, which will kill him. However, we still have one card left. <laughs> Let's see what this one does. Oh boy. Test 10 and add one to the result of this test for each angel. Okay, on a success, uh, Euphrates frogs immediately use one action. They just need an eight to succeed with this. Let's see. They only got a seven. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. So that means they're not going to activate. And that means this is still out on the board, but I think we may have just won the game. The reason I say that is Cultro has now been defeated. We still have four more damage that we can spread out. We can deal three more to Morbius and Morbius is toast. There's no more cards to draw. Yeah, our darkness track is totally full, but they're all three frogs toast. Now I've got to say, what an amazing game. Oh my gosh, came down to the wire. I have now played this three times. Yeah, three times. And each game has been incredibly tense like this. I've won one, I've lost one, and then I just won this one. Now, <laughs> I am going to say, uh, this is not normally how it goes. You aren't going to be able to get as lucky as I did with some of my dice rolls. And I went full uh, attacking, even with Sardius, who's more of a defensive player. I did that mostly because I'm I'm doing this as a recording. I don't want the video to be too terribly long. Uh, but if you were playing this, you could be a lot more uh, safe. You could get more shields. You could survive longer. I, you know, a lot better tactics than what I did. <laughs> Hopefully, though, this shows you how the game plays. So, with that fun ending, let's go ahead and talk about the game. Uh, 
First things first, of all of the Kickstarter previews that I have played, this one had the most complete rules. Rules were totally, they all made sense. Everything was there. Uh, I didn't have to ask any questions to Andrew. <laughs> I was able to play this whole thing with what I had. And that's with prototype components and a rule book that isn't even fully completed. I feel like Andrew did a phenomenal job of making all of the angels feel vastly different. Having these actions, everyone having the prey action, which is the same, which is nice. But then all of these actions being different means that each time you play a different angel, you're going to see... No, have a different experience. Uh, I ended up playing with two uh, characters that did area of effect damage, and it just happened to be that I drew the three boss ones. Normally, bosses are only one enemy with maybe like 60 health. So having three actually really helped. Christine wouldn't have been nearly as good, which is one boss versus the three like we saw. I also appreciate the diversity of all the different angels. You know, they didn't just do them all basic one color, all male, all female. They have a nice variety, which is really fun. Uh, you know, it, it just makes it feel more real, I would say, because of that. I feel like the combat is straightforward, easy to understand. The AI is super solid with the dice rolls. Sometimes they make silly choices, you know, like, hey, the, the, the fiends, they ended up dealing damage to themselves. But overall, I feel like the AI works really well. Just a die roll, you move them, then you go back to your turn. You've got tons of prayer cards that you can play on other people's turns, so you're going to be invested on other people's turns. You've got talents, you've got the heavenly treasures. And what really interests me too is the campaign. I'm excited to see what that's like. But I will say, just for a one-off boss battle, this was fun. I mean, I didn't feel like I steamrolled the bosses. I'm, Christine was one health from dying. Sardius already died one time. Yeah. And there are, just in what I've seen, nine different uh, basic enemies plus the six bosses. And then all the different angels. There's tons of different combinations. Look at all of these tiles. And they're all double-sided. I will say the theme speaks to me as well. I really like that we're angels angels taking on demons, but the demons don't look too scary, so I can play this with my seven-year-old son, no problem. Oh, and the darkness track, making, making it so you can't just deal with the enemies on the board, you have to go and pray and take care of these darkness cards, uh, and if you don't, they get flipped up and negative effects happen. I feel like they did a lot of things right here. Now, this game's not going to be for you. Well, you know, I don't know, because there's not even a ton of dice rolling. It's just those tests, and then the dice rolling to determine what the enemy are going to do. Uh, so even if you don't like dice rolling, overall, I think you could still enjoy this game. Yeah, you're going to have some tests that you have to do, but if you don't pass them, you don't pass them, right? Uh, it's not going to make it so you deal no damage or you fail or anything like that. The damage is guaranteed, and I think that that's great, both for the enemies and for the angels. So if you're really interested in a cooperative dungeon crawler where you are having guaranteed damage with maybe some tests that you have to roll dice on, variable AI, variable darkness, a campaign, pain for sure. Really, I just, I love how different all these prayer cards are and what they do. Oh, yeah. I, I highly recommend this one. This one I am going to back day one, not a question. I don't know what the final product's going to be like, but if it's even close to what I see here, I will definitely be happy. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful to you in determining if you want to back the game. Make sure to check out Barrett's playthrough, and there's, I'm sure, more playthroughs and more information than you possibly could need on the Kickstarter page. If you have any questions about the game as well, you can always put them on the Kickstarter, but you can ask me. This is what I have seen. <laughs> I can answer as best I can. Thank you so much, and I'll see you at the next stop.